nerderotic.com. Greetings, you over one million practitioners of common sense and the 40% who haven't subscribed yet. Listen, do you smell something? That ominous odor that's coming from Hollywood is a mixture of fear and what they just left in their pants. Why? Well, let's not bury the lead because this may come as shocking news to all the analysts who work in Hollywood and the corporate access media, but it won't be shocking at all to the general audience. Furiosa is a massive flop, and not just your average garden variety flop that we're used to from Hollywood these days. It's historic, the worst Memorial Day opening in over 40 years. And Furiosa could even lose that status if it doesn't maintain its slight lead over Garfield. <laughs> which at time of recording is still up in the air, but that doesn't change the fact that after the Fall Guy bombed and the underperformance of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Hollywood is reeling. Just two days before the release of Furiosa, a Mad Max saga without Mad Max, Deadline reported it was trucking to an 80 to 85 million worldwide start. Turns out that estimate was just a bit off to the tune of between 10 or 15 million dollars the wrong way, give or take a couple of million. Combine that with a Memorial Day weekend that's performing 40% lower than it was this time last year in a summer that's performing over 20% lower than it was at this time last year. And honestly, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone after the year of the flop buster, the streaming collapse, and the worst time strike in history, leaving the theaters with essentially holdovers, minus a couple of exceptions, from the worst year of writing in Hollywood's history. No, what's really got Hollywood and the corporate media analyst panties in a bunch is Furiosa is a well-received film from critics and the audience. And after watching Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, I would have to agree with some of that. It wasn't a bad film. Do you have it in you to make it epic? Furiosa, a Mad Max saga without Mad Max, is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, guest starring Mad Max, played by Tom Hardy, following the film's main character, Furiosa, played by Charlize Theron, who is now played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who doesn't show up until 40 minutes into the film. The first third is following young Furiosa after she is snatched from the green place of many mothers, which includes an on-the-nose opening scene of young Furiosa grabbing an apple. But instead of being expelled from Eden, she was taken as young Furiosa ends up in the hands of the man who murdered her mother, the warlord Dementis, played by Chris Hemsworth. Ultimately, young Furiosa goes from one tormentor to another when she is traded to a Morton Joe. And the last two-thirds of this two-and-a-half-hour film, we follow Anya Taylor-Joy's Furiosa on a mission of vengeance and trying to find her way home as she navigates the wasteland without surprisingly getting assaulted. Protect the green place. No, the other kind of assaulted. All while the most compelling part of the Mad Max saga without Mad Max was going on, the battle for dominance between Immortan Joe and Dr. Dementis. And yes, there is a lot of good in Furiosa. Chris Hemsworth steals the show, bad fake nose aside. His two villain monologues are brilliant and a more concise form of characterization than the two films it took to get to know Furiosa. And here's a strange one. The world building, which I don't think you need in a Mad Max movie, was pretty good. And considering this wasn't a Mad Max movie, it was fine. And again, watching the difference in warlords between the cold and calculating Immortan Joe versus the chaos agent Dementis was fun. There just wasn't enough of it. As everyone has said, the action is top notch. George Miller hasn't lost a thing when it comes to directing. The gear porn was brilliant. The choppers, the motorcycles, the rigs, the cars, the ultralights. I will not question the directing prowess of George Miller. You will not see a better action film this year. I will question his choice for protagonist. I don't think I'm going out on a limb here by saying the character of Furiosa, be it played by Charlize Theron or Anya Taylor-Joy, is going to go down in the annals of iconic pop culture character history. I think she'll be a decent footnote, and they might even mention something aside from taking screen time away from Mad Max and Fury Road. Alia Brown and Anya Taylor-Joy did a commendable job playing what is an average character. And this is where we get to why Furiosa flopped. In this case, the answer is simpler than Hollywood and those who analyze it think. I know you know the answer already, but they're having a hard time with it. Remember, the access media was feeling so good about this movie, it prompted IGN to write this. 
Furiosa, why the Mad Max movies don't need Mad Max anymore. To be fair, it's been a rough month preceded by a rough year, preceded by a rough half decade for anyone who works in or around Hollywood. Again, The Fall Guy, which was well received by both critics and the audience, flopped. The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which was both well received by critics and the audience, underperformed which upset a writer from the Jimmy Fallon show enough to say this, I think it's time to accept that a large part of the movie going public sucks shit. I think I can speak for most of the audience by saying the feeling is mutual and keep in mind that was a WGA writer who recently went on strike for more money. Enjoy trade school. And that statement is one of the biggest reasons nobody's watching Jimmy Fallon anymore and nobody's going to the movie theater. But Furiosa is a different beast because it is a good movie that's going to flop historically. That's already led to the typical Hollywood navel gazing that really needs to be a come to Jesus, by all means have that. And the entire industry along with the access media is already starting to gather the excuses, anything from bad timing, the recent solar eclipse, COVID, good weather, misogynist bigots. Aside from the honorable mention of Furiosa becoming victim of something Fury Road helped create, it wasn't patient zero, but it certainly helped usher in the bait and switch the male protagonist for a female protagonist girl boss era of Hollywood. An era that has destroyed the female protagonist more than any real misogynist could dream of. To borrow a phrase from the criminally undersubbed It's a Gundam, Hollywood girl boss too close to the sun. And maybe it hurt a film that didn't have a girl boss, Furiosa. But that's not why it failed. So why did Furiosa flop? It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery inside a conundrum. Well, it turns out Mad Max does need to be in a Mad Max film, and he needs to be played by Mel Gibson. Hollywood simply isn't giving people what they want, and when they do, it's successful. You put Tobey Maguire in a Spider-Man movie and it makes $2 billion. How'd that get in there? Deadpool and Wolverine isn't out for two months and it's already made $10 million. You mean to tell me if you put two iconic actors in their iconic roles in proper costumes and put them in a movie together, people want to see it? Someone should have thought of that sooner. Nah, it's a way better idea to recast a side character that no one cared about from an underperforming film and put her in her own movie with a bigger budget. What could go wrong? Turns out everything. As much as I liked Furiosa, the Mad Max saga, it would have been better if Mad Max was in the Mad Max saga, played by Mel Gibson. And in closing, I would like you all to internalize this absolute fact. There are only three Mad Max films. NerdErotic.com If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. If it's all the same to you, I'll drive that tanker.